What's good guys, it's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be continuing to answer some of your questions that you have been leaving on my lock content videos. So let's jump right into it. Hold on just a moment. Before we go into today's video, if you're interested in this look and finding out how I achieved this on myself, definitely go on over and check this video out to find out exactly how I went about achieving this look. My very first lock style that I've done on my hair in the past two years since I've been locked. So yeah, let's get right into today's video. Okay, so the first question we have here is, do you rinse the shampoo out of your hair or do you keep rubbing it in? Now you guys will be familiar with the way how I apply shampoo to mine and Jaden's hair when it comes to our wash day. I often use a tinting bowl and a tinting brush to apply the shampoo directly to our scalp. You know, if you have been watching some of my older videos, um, you would see that I do show the full um, routine in how I apply the shampoo and rub it in and then rinse it out. Now the videos that you may have seen where I'm not showing the fullness, I think I just cut those out because I just assumed that you guys would understand that I do wash it out. But clearly, you know, I have had a few people asking me whether I wash the shampoo out or not. And the answer to that is yes, I do wash the shampoo out. It's just that those videos um, that you have seen where I'm not washing it out is just like to kind of cut down the time of the video so it's not just showing the same thing over and over again. But for the fact that people are asking this question, I will make sure in future whenever I do a wash day routine video to show the full step of me applying the shampoo and rinsing it out. Just so that, you know, future people who watch the video aren't confused as to whether or not I do wash the shampoo out or not. Okay, so the next question we have here is where can I buy the tools you use to interlock your roots? Now, if you're interested in purchasing any of the tools that I used, then you can definitely find a link in the description bar below, um, you know, to make a purchase. Now, I am aware that majority of my audience are based in the United States. And um, if you guys know anything about me, then you'll know that my husband is an American citizen. And you know, he's always said to me, he's like, Keisha, like, nobody really use ebay <laughs> because i buy all my stuff from ebay so he's like keisha um, us americans don't really like shop on ebay it's more so amazon so what i will do is leave some links in the description bar below for you to go and purchase the tools if you're interested there will be an ebay link because that's where i purchase mine from but there will also be an amazon link for my us subscribers my american subscribers I got y'all in the description below, okay? <laughs> so the next question that I have here is, do you only use shampoo or do you use conditioner as well on your locks? And the answer to that question is I do use conditioner on my locks and I will leave a video right here for you to go and check out to find out why it is important to use conditioner on your hair. Now I know there are some people out there that say that you're not supposed to use conditioner on your locks. Now that is totally up to whoever it is. Like there are some people that use conditioner and there are some people that don't. I'm someone who do use conditioner on mine and my son's locks. But I have to say, you know, with my older son, when he had his locks, when he was much younger, I never used to use conditioner on his hair, but that was more to my ignorance, right? So I didn't know any better. So now I do use conditioner on both mine and Jaden's locks. So the answer to that is yes, I do use conditioner as well. Okay, so the next question I have here is, do you palm roll the length of your locks? Now, when I retwist mine and Jaden's hair, I never really, you know, focus on the length of our locks. Aside from in the early stages of our lock journey, I would always, um, I don't necessarily say palm roll, but I think the way how I retwist is considered palm rolling, but I usually just twist, like just twirl the, um, the roots and I do that to the length of the locks. I don't necessarily palm roll it like that. Um, but I do that in the earlier stages when it's a little bit more frizzy and stuff like that. But um, now that our locks are actually formed, I definitely don't do that. I just literally focus on the root. Okay, moving on to the next question. We have, 
do you go to sleep while your locks are still wet now i remember in my last um frequently asked questions video i did say that i always sleep on my my um retwist like whenever i wash my hair and i retwist it i'll go to bed now for me yes i actually go to bed with my hair wet but it's not like dripping soaking wet never that like whenever i wash my hair i always try and squeeze out as much of the water like when i'm rinsing and everything i squeeze my locks until it's not really dripping and then once i'm done i'll then use a towel to dry my hair and then by the time i am done retwisting you know it's not so wet if you understand what i'm saying so the answer is yes i go to bed with my locks wet but it's not like dripping crazy wet and often when i wake up the next day my locks are dry it's not like you don't feel any dampness to it so i do go to bed with my locks wet okay so moving on to the next question i have here and that is i have soft curly and thick hair is two strand twist the best method to start with what about instant locks or comb coils now when you have soft curly hair or thick hair etc now i would say especially if your hair is soft i would say personally the best method to start with is um instant locks like i find that no matter what your hair texture is instant locks is always the best option but not everybody you know have the time to you know learn how to do that themselves or know someone that can install that themselves now i would leave a video right here for you to go and check out to um you know answer a little bit more questions or not answer questions but give you a little bit more insight as to what you should consider when or before you start your lock journey so definitely go on over to this link right here to you know get a little bit more information as to what you need to be thinking about before starting your lock journey and what to consider especially when it comes to the texture of your hair and the next question we have here is how do i retwist two strand twist starter locks without them getting loose now when that person asked that question because in my frequently asked questions video i did speak on you know locks unraveling so with this question i believe that person may be referring to the um the roots how you know it gets a little bit loose like after a couple of days it gets a bit frizzy now what i would suggest in that instance is interlocking now i don't necessarily like interlocking for myself i just don't like the finished look but if you are very concerned about you know the retwist getting a bit loose at the roots i would certainly suggest using the interlocking method so the next question i have here is why do i have afro at the roots and ends of my locks yet the middle is locked do you have any tips or suggestions now when i got this question you know the first thing that came to mind is you know obviously i'm trying to imagine you know afro at the roots and afro at the end but the middle is locked and my suggestions for that or tips for that is I haven't really got any suggestions or tips for that because you are actually in the budding phase of your lock journey and when your locks start to bud it obviously that area that is a bit like you know a little bit like rounded <laughs> i don't know how to explain it but that part is actually locked or it is a locking and um the frizz at the ends and the tip usually occur so there's not much suggestion i could say like how to avoid that because that is a part of the journey and you are definitely getting your locks your locks are certainly forming and it's just something that happened that's what people call the ugly phase even though i don't personally think it's an ugly phase it's just a part of the journey but that is what people call the ugly phase but it will eventually go so don't stress your head about it or anything like that the only thing i can suggest in the meantime is just keep your hair covered in the night so it don't look any more frizzy and you know i guess not as neat as you would like it to look so yeah that's what i can say in regards to that so embrace the budding phase you are on your way to being fully locked
not, okay? <laughs> so the next question I have here is, will my dreads be thicker if I start my lock journey with the two strand twist method? And that is a very interesting question because, 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 when I started my second lock journey, which is this one that I'm currently on, as you guys would know, I started this journey with the two strand twist method. The first lock journey I started with the instant lock met instant lock method. Yeah, the instant dreadlocks method. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, when I started this journey, I assumed, I assumed that if I started with the two strand twist, that my locks would be thicker. And as you guys would know, in my two year lock update video, I've shared with you all, that's not necessarily the case. But like within my first six, seven months of my lock journey, up to the 10th month, I think, maybe a little bit less, you know, my locks were actually quite thick and I loved it. But as time went on, I was like, where is the plumpness? Where has it gone? Come back, come back. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> so the answer to that question is no. If you start your locks with the two strand twist method, that doesn't guarantee that you are going to have thick locks. However, I did share with you all uh, my three top tips on getting thicker locks. And again, I will definitely go ahead and link that video right here for you to check out. Okay, so the final question I'm going to be answering today is I am having a lot of webbing or merging together of my locks. How do I keep them separated without popping them every day? Now to answer that question, I'm assuming that you are either on a fully free form lock journey or a semi free form lock journey. Because if you have cultivated locks like the one I'm locking, um, people often or usually, you know, retwist their hair often. Now, if you're having merging of your locks, I'm assuming you're not retwisting very often. Now, if you're on a semi-free form or a fully free form lock journey, you don't necessarily want that and you don't want to have to pop or, you know, separate your hair every day. I think that's what the question said. You doing it every day? Uh, let me see. Yeah, popping them every day. Oh, that's a bit difficult. Um, I'm not sure. And um, the only way I could think as to why your hair is merging together so much is because of friction, obviously rubbing on the sheets or the bed when you're sleeping and stuff like that. Um, I mean, the best thing you can do is definitely separate them. But if you're separating them on a um, consistent basis, the merging shouldn't necessarily be like too excessive, if you see what I'm saying. Um, so I would absolutely suggest to just, yeah, just keep separating them every day. Obviously, if you're separating them every day, there shouldn't necessarily be... Um, a uh, point where they are they are popping because I remember my um, younger brothers and sisters I mean they have locks um, well my younger brother he doesn't have locks anymore neither my older brother he doesn't have locks anymore but I remember when I used to um, retwist their hair you know they usually have a lot of merging together but I know that they weren't retwisting their hair very often so that's how I know that that's how I know webbing or merging can occur if you're not retwisting your hair often or if you are on a semi-free form or free forming lock journey. So if you're on a free form or a semi-free form, then that's kind of come along with the, um, the journey. But if it's like more of a cultivated lock journey and you're experiencing that, the best thing I can suggest is just, you know, try to separate them as often as you can because I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, that's just what I think, just to separate them um, as often. But once you have gotten into a good routine, then they shouldn't be merging together. Or you could just retwist your hairs to avoid the merging. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, then please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. So until next time, I will be right back here with another video.